dark matter real? Or is the problem that we don't understand how gravity works? It's one of the big ongoing dramas in science at the moment. And today I have an update that speaks strongly against dark matter. Let's have a look. We have a lot of observational evidence for dark matter, which may not exist. But the most obvious observation is what's called galactic rotation curves. These are measurements of how fast galaxies rotate at different distances from the galactic center. And this is also what the new paper is about. Galaxies usually have most of their stars in the center. It's called the bulge of the galaxy. The biggest part of the visible mass is there. From this, you can calculate how fast the stars further out should go around the center of the galaxy. Loosely speaking, the centripetal force that comes from the rotation needs to balance the gravitational pull. So the more mass inside the orbit, the faster the stars need to go around. If you calculate the rotation speeds as a function of the distance from the center for normal gravity, you find that it should drop with one over the square root of the radius. Trouble is, in most observations, it doesn't drop. Rather, the rotation speed first goes up and then remains more or less constant. This is called a flat rotation curve. There are two different ways that astrophysicists have tried to explain this. One is to say there's more matter in the galaxies than we can see. That's the dark matter. It's usually not distributed in a disk, but in a spherical halo, which extends way, way outside the visible parts of the galaxies. But it does eventually fade out. This is an important point that I'll come back to later, so keep this in mind. Okay, so this is how dark matter works. The other way to explain flat rotation curves is to say that if you go to the far out reaches of a galaxy, then the gravitational force doesn't drop with the usual 1 over r squared, but just with 1 over r. This leads to flat rotation curves, and this is the idea of modified Newtonian dynamics, MOND for short, which sounds like the name of a minor Game of Thrones character. MOND, first of his name, slayer of celestial spheres, breaker of gravitational models. But I digress. The authors of the new paper now measured rotation curves far, far away from the centers of galaxies, further out than has ever been done before. They did this by weak gravitational lensing, where the gravitational lens is the galaxy of which you want to measure the rotation curve. The reason it's called weak gravitational lensing is not that it's been skipping gym lately, but that it merely mildly deforms images of galaxies behind the lens. In contrast to strong gravitational lenses that are quite easy to identify even by eye, weak gravitational lenses just make small background distortions that one identifies statistically. Still, the idea is the same. For the new paper, they look especially at well-isolated galaxies, so there's empty space to all sides. They also focus on disk galaxies that we see edge on because that makes it easier to get the statistics right. From the weak gravitational lens, data, they calculate the effective gravitational potential that would be needed to get the right gravitational lensing, and from that they construct the rotation curve. And the kicker is, it remains flat way, way outside of galaxies, up to a million light years in some cases. Just for reference, the visible part of the Milky Way is about a tenth of this. This is super interesting because the dark matter halos should have faded out by then. You can see this here. The prediction from the most commonly used dark matter halos doesn't fit with this data at all. This is not an easy problem to fix. The dark matter halo needs to fade out because the share of dark matter in galaxies is usually much higher than the share in the universe overall. You've probably seen this pie chart that tells you the components of matter and energy in the universe. About 25% are dark matter and 5% normal matter. So that's the ratio 5 to 1 or so. But in galaxies, it's more like 10 to 1 or even 20 to 1. If you want to get the average in the universe right, then the ratio in the space between galaxies must be lower. Hence, the dark matter halos must fade out. But you know which theory predicts these long flat rotation curves? Yes, one does. As you know, I've changed my mind about this back and forth a few times, which is why today I want to introduce you to the Mondometer. As you can see, it just moved back into the Mond corner. 
But who knows, by the next video, it may be doing the cha-cha over to the dark matter side again. Theoretical physics is keeping us all on our toes, so don't forget to subscribe. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And they're adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.